Hello and welcome to your monthly numerology here at Readings at the Roundtable. I'm Jennifer and this is your monthly numerology for November 2024. I love this. I do. I love that the numerology for November and December is always the same monthly numerology as it is in January and February of the next year. The reason why I love that is because we're sort of carrying over a little bit of the energy from the previous year, moving into a new year with a new number because 2025 is a nine year. Currently 2024 is an eight year. 44, eight year is what I say. There's some people with numerology that don't feel that way. That's fine to each his own. Um, but this is a 44, eight year and moving into 2025 is a nine year. So it is going to be the same, but a little bit different feeling of the vibration with the numbers that you have for November as in January. So, but it, it's, it's carrying the same energy over so that you can kind of clear the energy, move into something new while still bringing a little bit of the old with you. You know, making yourself comfortable, I guess I should say. So for November, we've got a, a few things happening, some interesting things happening astrologically. On November 1st, we start the month off with a new moon in Scorpio. New moon in Scorpio hits its peak at 8.47 a.m. on November 1st. So not only is it happening on the first day of the month, but it's also happening first thing in the morning. So I really do love this. And by the way, that is 8.47 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. That's when it hits its peak. On November 2nd, we have Mercury moving into Sagittarius. Now, this is not the worst place for Mercury, but it is certainly not its favorite place because Mercury rules Gemini, which opposes Sagittarius. And so it's, it's feeling a little, bit, mm, a little bit uneasy because it's opposing something that it rules. However, here, here's the kicker. Jupiter is currently in Gemini. Guess who it rules? Sagittarius. So, and, and that's the more modern version of astrology. If you're looking at the like traditional, it's a different ruler, but this is what we're going with. So Jupiter rules Sagittarius, Mercury rules uh, Gemini, and they're opposing each other. So this is going to be real entertaining for a minute. That's what I'm going to go with, entertaining. <laughs> On the 3rd of November, we have Mars moving into Leo. Mars does enjoy being in fire signs. I mean, it rules Aries. So Mars does enjoy being in Leo. This is a good time. Um, on the 11th, Venus moves into Capricorn. Again, not a horrible place for Venus. Its worst place is in Virgo. And who can blame it? I mean, I have a Virgo sun. I can't blame Venus for that. But definitely, it's... It's not a horrible place for Venus. Um, so again, we're just still dealing with like a lot of the planets are moving into places that are not the worst, but maybe not their most favorite. Um, on the 15th, we have a full moon in Taurus. The full moon hits its peak at 428 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And also on the same day, Saturn goes direct in um, Pisces. So, um, that Saturn is currently in, again, not the worst place for Saturn, but certainly not its most favorite, but it's giving us a little bit of a boost on our discipline. Now that Saturn is moving direct, it's giving us just a little bit of a boost in our discipline because going retrograde in a water sign, it's, it's already feeling a little weird in that water sign. And now it's going retrograde. It's just like, okay. This is good. But going direct, it is going to give us that boost in our discipline that I do feel like we need. On the 19th, Pluto moves back into Aquarius. Now, I hope, I haven't looked ahead into 2025 that deeply, but I do not believe that Pluto goes retrograde into Capricorn again. I think Pluto is here stationing in Aquarius for the next 20 years. Pluto does not 
fully leave Aquarius until 2044. So we're in this for the long haul. Yeah, I kind of dig that. Now, on the 21st, we have the sun moving into Sagittarius. All right, Sag season. I mean, I love all those Sagges out there just like, oh, celebrate good times. I know, you're in it. Um, on the 25th, we have a little, just a little bit of a curveball, but not a huge one because we deal with this a few times in a year. Mercury goes retrograde. It's okay. We're going to be okay. We are. Just make sure you read the fine print. Make sure you double check everything. Just, it's going to be all right. It's a few weeks out of the year. Like, what is this, the third time or the fourth time we've had Mercury retrograde this year? I know. It's not horrible, and I'm double ruled by Mercury. We can get through this. And it's after the election, so we should be clear. Hopefully. Well, the election here in the U.S., <laughs> just FYI. And it's really gearing us up for this holiday season. Mercury retrograde, mix up in communication. Please double check with your guests. Please double check with everything that's going on and please double check like prices and your money situation as we move into the holiday season. More on that in just a second. Now, at the end of the month, we're ending with uh, three planets and north node in fire. Uh, we have three planets and south node in air. Two planets in Earth and two planets in water. So it's pretty balanced. I mean, we're in a pretty balanced situation, I feel like. Um, more so than we have been, like, some parts of this year. But I'm really, I'm really digging this. This is good. I feel like this is going to be a fantastic month. Now, I want to tell you about the stone that I have picked for this month. Or maybe it picked me. I don't know. But um, I want to talk to you about this lovely, lovely crystal stone, however you want to put it, and um, see what you think. Okay, so the one that I picked is Sodalite. Sodalite is such a fantastic stone. I mean, look at this. Look at how gorgeous this is. And look at how many different sorts of, like, I, I want to say like variations we have, okay? We have some darker ones. We have some lighter ones with more of the, like the white veining in it. I have some rough and some polished hair, some smooth. This is like one of the prettiest, prettiest like examples. I love this. Look at the browns and the blacks and the whites and the blues. And it predominantly is a blue stone. But wow, 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 wow. The thing about this bracelet I really want to show you is do you see like all the variations that are in this bracelet? That is fantastic examples of like all the variations that you can get in Soda Light. I know. And this, I can't help it. I mean, isn't that just gorgeous? I know you can see the reflections of my lights, but isn't that just a gorgeous piece? And of course we have like the ones that are, don't roll off, don't roll off, stay right there. Um, we have the lighter ones that does have, you can still see the little bit of brown in it, but the lighter ones are still, I mean, so pretty. I even brought out a wand, you know, um, a wand, a heart, some polished, some of the more like rough stones. I have a lot of these. I, I do really, I really, really like Soda Light. So let me tell you why I like Soda Light so much. So one of the things that I really, when I was looking up, and I got several different books here. One book that I pulled from was Crystal Therapy um, by one woman that we don't speak of a lot. And the other one is Judith Lukomsky. I think I'm saying that right, but Crystal Therapy. It is a fantastic book if you can get your hands on it. The definition that I really love is helps you release control issues, increases psychic awareness, and is wonderful. It is a wonderful third eye stone. I Seriously, that is fantastic. And I think that releasing control issues during this time of 
Mercury uh, going retrograde is going to be really important. Um, it also um, helps clear electromagnetic stress. So being around like your computers or being on your phone all the time or having to use your GPS, this is a good time to like use some of this stuff. Um, use soda light to help clear out some of this stuff. Um, this is great for building self-esteem, self-acceptance, self-trust. Um, it relieves panic attacks, phobias, guilt, um, mental confusion. I think that is amazing. I really do. Um, this stone helps to stimulate the pineal and pituitary glands, and it harmonizes with the third eye and deepens meditation to understand the circumstances in which you find yourself. Again, we're entering into the holiday season, especially here in the U.S., because we have Thanksgiving before we run into Christmas. Um, this, uh, it helps to uh, eliminate confusion and intellectual bondage. It releases mental conditioning and rigid beliefs, creating space to put new insights into practice, bringing about emotional balance. I love that. It transforms a defensive or overly sensitive personality and releasing core, core fears and control mechanisms and integrating the shadow qualities. It's useful for groups. It brings harmony and solidarity of purpose, stimulating trust and companionship and encouraging interdependence. Soda light clears, again, electromagnetic pollution and can be placed on computers. I think this is such, this is such a wonderful thing. I, I do. I love this. I love, love, love this stone. I think it's wonderful. And this is the other book that I use, The Encyclopedia of Crystals by Judy Hall. Highly, highly recommend this book. I have a couple of copies of this. Can't get away from it. I know. I just, I love it. I, I do recommend it to everyone. Um, the other thing that I wanted to tell you is I am going to be pulling from two decks of cards today. I'm going to be pulling from Moonology, the Oracle cards, and the Goddess Guidance Oracle card deck um, so that we can get some advice for your monthly, your individual monthly numerology. Yeah. I, I'm really looking forward to November. I'm really looking forward to revisiting this monthly numerology when we move into a nine year and seeing what the, what the difference is, what the vibration is going to be like. Because with this month in particular, we have a lot of planets that are starting to move into a, like into new signs. They're going direct. They're starting to go direct. Mercury's going retrograde. It's, it's a lot of energy, but I'm looking forward to seeing what the numerology looks like for you in January under the different vibration of a nine year. I know. So excited. All right. Stick around. Let's see what your individual numerology is for your life path. And uh, so we can get through the, the last of this eight year. Hello, Life Path 7. Okay, November for you is an eight month. So you are doubling down in this vibration. Okay, 2024 is a 44 eight year. So we are, you're doubling down in November in eight. <clears throat> so this is a fantastic time for you to manifest like crazy. Yeah. So the mantra of the eight, let's just go ahead and get that out of the way, is I embrace the power within me while honoring the divinity in others. That means that you recognize the power that you have within you, but you're also looking at your neighbor. You're looking at the person across from you. You're looking at the people around you and recognizing that they have, they have some too, that they are also connected to the divine. Now, the vibration of the eight is about 
um, inspiration, an abundance of inspiration, an abundance of time, of energy, of money. This is understanding that there is an infinite supply of those things. This is understanding that the abundance is not limited, but it is limited in our heads. We create the limitations. Now, I'm not suggesting if you were just sitting on your ass, like watching the love boat, drinking a Coors that, you know, money's just going to flood into your bank account. No, because this is a time of manifesting, but manifesting takes work. So if you are looking for a job, looking for a relationship, looking for a side hustle, uh, wanting a cleaner house or wanting a better looking closet, um, you know, whatever, or better looking basement, it's time to actually work towards that, work towards it. Because manifesting is working hard at something while changing the thought process to bring it in. Like that's the law of attraction is changing the thought process. This is a time for you. This vibration here is setting an example of self-empowerment for others. Now that sounds fun, doesn't it? Mm, I want to be self-empowered. Really? You don't because self-empowerment imp implies that you've been through some shit. Excuse my language, but it does. Being self-empowered means that you have been through some really difficult times and you are the only one that you could count on. And you pulled yourself up by the bootstraps. Yeah. So this is, a, this is that time for you to recognize there is an infinite supply. There is an abundance out there. Money, power, inspiration, time, energy. It's all there. But... It's also a time of karma. Have you pulled yourself up by the bootstraps? Are you teaching other people how to be self-empowering? Whether it's family members, a spouse, a friend, a coworker, whatever. Are you showing them how to pull themselves up? Because it sounds like, and really, we've all been through something. We've all been through it. Nobody gets out of this life just like with no baggage. I mean, come on. So this is definitely a time of karma. It's, time, it's a time of reaping what you've sown. What have you been putting out there? That's what you're going to be getting back in. That's what you're going to be getting back in until like, you know, that cycle is over. So make sure that you're putting some good stuff out there so that you're bringing back good stuff. You're showing people, you're helping people. And the first thing that you need to do is seriously understand that there is an infinite supply. You just gotta tap into it. Not easy, it's not easy. I don't really know what's going over there, going on over there with my cat, but I don't know if you can hear that, but it's some crazy noise. Um, anyway, back to the reading. Um, this is also a time of ambition. This is also a vibration of making you feel very ambitious. And I think that's fantastic. I really do. Because the lesson of the seven is making choices without retreating from others and finding the answers within yourself and trusting them. You have the answers within yourself. Trust them. Trust what you're, the faith. Trust that the faith that you're stepping in the right direction and trust your intuition. That's also in abundance this month. Love that. So the lesson of the eight is to lead with compassion for others and not with the ego. Also challenging if you've been through some shit and you're like, I don't know, I wouldn't do that. You know, I... I get that, but not everybody's going to listen to you. Sometimes they need to experience it themselves. So let them have that experience. Maybe that's part of their journey, but you can be there for them. Right? Yeah. So um, the shadow side of the vibration of the eight is accepting responsibility for other people's choices. I Do you know anyone who does that? 
Accepting responsibility for other people's choices is challenging, especially when you're wanting to help them and you see them sinking and you see them like going down a dark place and you're just like, please let me help you. Please let me help you. You can't accept responsibility for their choices. You can be there for them. You can be encouraging. You can be helpful, but you cannot accept responsibility for their choices. Um, trying to fix them. Oh, oh my gosh. You know, I didn't get married until I was 40. So I dated a lot in my twenties and thirties. And there was a lot of people out there that I tried to fix that did not end well. So I'm just telling you, trying to fix others, not, not the best look. It really isn't. Um, and attachment to the material, getting too attached to the material can like be a thing this month. It really can. Um, but with Mercury going retrograde, it's a good time to clear some stuff out. Why? Why is she doing this? Um, it can be a good time to clear some stuff out. The communication breakdown is there. Um, so be careful. But um, this can be a time for you to sort of, I don't want to say unload, but it's definitely not a time for you to run from your problems. And you know what I'm talking about. Trust your judgment, have faith, and listen to your intuition. Is it easy? Absolutely not. Self-empowerment is never just like that easy. But this is like, this is who you are. This is your life path, is trusting your own judgment listening to your intuition. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. Stop doubting yourself. Stop running from problems and decisions. They're not going away. <laughs> Are they? Have they? Have they gone away? Yeah. All right. So let's see what kind of uh, cards we get for your advice cards. That cat, I'm telling you. Aphrodite, inner goddess. Oh, that's a good one. Awaken the goddess within you through dance, self-care, and appreciate your divinity. Shut up. That is so perfect for you. Appreciate your divinity. Come on, Canon, get focused here. Appreciate your divinity inner goddess awaken the goddess within you through dance self-care and appreciating your divinity well that's freaking awesome oh, i love it Pisces. Oh, this is so awesome. Balance, spirituality, and practicality. And really, <clears throat> that's what it's about. Because really, your life path is all about spiritual connection, spiritual expansion, metaphysical expansion, and connection. And eight is a lot of the physical. I love it. Okay, let's look up full moon in Pisces so that I'm not just spouting out words here. Full moon in Pisces. Balance spirituality and practicality. Let's see if we can get the canon to focus. There we go. All right. Have you been so head in the clouds that you've lost touch with reality? Well, I have. If so, take this card as a sign that you need to pay attention and make a concerted effort to move 
towards your goals. The more practical steps you take, the better. It's time to find an inner balance between your responsibilities and your dreams. Um, meditate on your question and the solutions to your issues may now come through very clearly. If you're in a tricky situation because you've been acting the martyr, this card will be a message from the cosmos to drop the act for everyone's sake. Meditate every day and see what comes to you. The answers will come. And you need to trust them. I love it. I love it. I love it. Thank you so much for joining me today, Life Path 7. I appreciate your support on my channel so much. So thank you so much for sticking around during my little four-month sabbatical. It was nice to see a lot of you back last month, I'll say. Well, I'm still in October, so <laughs> whatever. But anyway, <laughs> I am so looking forward to uh, 2025, to finishing up 2024 with you and looking forward to um, a new year. It's going to be great. In the meantime, have a wonderful November, and until we see each other again, get out there and make your magic. Bye.